U.S.-China trade tensions were top of the agenda at a gathering of business leaders, policymakers and academics in Beijing. Our correspondent Tom McKenzie is covering the China Development Forum, which wraps up later today. And Tom, what interesting times. What's the mood there? Certainly, interesting times for these Western executives to be here in China. This is a forum where they get to meet policymakers and to try to get a feel for the direction of travel here and how China's lawmakers are making their decisions on a whole range of issues. But of course, the trade tensions are dominating the discussions here, as you said, and very much the view that we've been getting from the executives and the academics that we've been speaking to is there is a growing sense of concern, of course, about the trajectory of the US-China ties, but also a need for the corporates here to understand the implications of these tariffs being imposed by the Trump administration, exactly which sectors and which products they're going to be targeting so that they can better position themselves for the potential acceleration in response from China. And that's something else that people have been commenting on here, is the fact that the response from China has been relatively measured and strategic. Though there are warnings from the people we've been speaking to here that have access in the ears of the Chinese policymakers that those measures could be stepped up if the Trump administration continues to pressure Beijing. One person we spoke to was the economist Stephen Roach from Yale University. Take a listen to what he had to say. China has uh, responded very uh, modestly, given um, the potential uh, uh, weapons it has at its disposal in terms of countervailing tariffs and its um, you know, possible shift in uh, purchases of U.S. Treasuries. Uh, so there's you know, plenty more to come if the, the U.S. chooses to uh, stay with this um, uh, reckless policy. I also spoke to the Nobel laureate Joseph Stiglitz. He said that he thought if a trade war uh, did come about, that China would ultimately be victorious because of the amount of measures, the tools that it has it's at its disposal. We also sat down and spoke to the CEO, Sergio Amotti of UBS, and he said he doesn't think the market implications are going to be significant, dramatically significant in the short term. But he says longer term, if these tensions do exacerbate, then it would be very, and I quote, disturbing. Look, there is also a fundamental fundamental mismatch here between the corporates, the Western corporates, the US corporates, who agree with the Trump administration on the need to tackle tech transfers and market access, but who fundamentally disagree with the approach that the Trump administration is taking. Tom, we also heard from the new PBOC governor. He's had a message for business leaders there. What was it? Yeah, PBOC Governor Yi Gang talking yesterday saying that there would be further measures rolled out to open up the markets here. He said also they would be stepping up their measures to make the yuan a more convertible currency, though we were not given time frames or the specifics on either of those measures. He's also talked about monetary policy remaining neutral and prudent. And he was asked whether the sectors here, whether the Chinese economy was able to weather the storm if the external environment, external environment deteriorates. Take a listen. If any external risks threaten China, I think the current banking system, insurance and securities markets, and the controls in place leave China well-placed to mitigate those risks. We also heard over the weekend reports from the New York Times that Guo Xu Qing, who's the head of the merged banking and insurance regulator, has taken on a key and powerful role at the PBOC, the party secretary. This man is seen as something of a reformer. He's been very aggressive in tackling shadow banking and China's conglomerates. So he's another man to watch. Guo Xu Qing, Yi Gang is the PBOC governor, and of course Liu He, who's the vice premier in charge, in charge of economic and financial affairs.